Welcome back to the green yard. It is a little bit of a chilly fall day. Uh, we're almost at the end of October and I have a planting video to go through with you. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this one. I've heard really great things about the fruit from this tree and so I'm excited to hopefully get to try it in the future. Um, I have it here next to me. This is our hog plum. It's a red hog plum, which I heard are a little bit sweeter than the yellow hog plum. So hog plums are native to uh, Central America, to the rainforest there. And we're going to put it over here in the uh, food forest part of the green yard. I have my Kerry mango tree right behind me, the one that fruited this year. Jackfruit tree is right over here. African tulip. And then of course, just a uh, load of our other amazing, beautiful trees here in the food forest part of the green yard. Koi fish pond is right here next to me. Um, so I'm actually gonna put this guy in a spot that uh, I started with a, another plant. Um, it's a Australian finger lime. I had a finger lime at our old house. It did amazing. Uh, I got, I think like 10 or 15 finger limes off less than a year old tree. It did really, really well there. Um, but when we moved and I tried to take it out of the ground, it didn't like that move. So I bought a new one. Unfortunately, that new one I put in a bad spot because I based it off of our last yard instead of off of this yard. So actually in the summer, I tried to move that um, finger lime over to this location and unfortunately it did not like the move it did not like being uh, taken out it was mostly dead already when I did so but it has officially uh, died at this point in time so I'm actually going to use this space uh, for a hog plum the reason why is two reasons one is that this is an open space that gets full sun hog plums like are hot intense sun they actually thrive off of the heat they really really like that heat um, or so i've been told and then uh, the other part is that it's still protected by this mulberry tree so hopefully it'll have a little bit better frost protection a little bit more protection from that cold as we go into the winter um, it's actually a pretty cold day here today that's why i'm wearing pants um almost i think it's going to be 49 degrees tonight so a little bit unseasonably unseasonably cool but i know that all the trees here can handle it even this guy for that brief dip down to maybe 49 degrees over here though i really don't have to worry about any of these trees we have the pond which helps to raise that temperature a little bit that body of water uh also most areas over here are heavily mulched and then of course i have our huge giant mulberry tree which does stop most of that frost most of that cold from actually reaching the ground so the trees over here have done really really well um in the winter time so i'm hoping that that continues with our hog plum so let's go ahead let's um prep the area and let's start getting this hog plum uh planted in the ground here we go I said before we're over here uh, I have to remove our uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove our old finger line first go ahead and take that guy out and then we'll put our hog plum in here so this was the finger line tree as you can see really not 
uh, alive very much anymore. I did do a scratch test. The lower half is, but above the graft, it's a little bit uh, on the sketchy side there. Hello, Blake. This is our green, do green yard dog, Blake. I'm gonna pet him back here so you guys can still see. So um, I'm literally just gonna take it out. I know it hasn't grown any roots in the time that it's been here. So um, I can literally just pull it out of the ground. You'll see it has very few roots here. Um, unfortunately, it just did not like its initial spot. So um, I had to remove it. So I went ahead and took that out of the old location. Uh, it, it was still alive, but just not, it, it's, it's not gonna recover from its initial shock that it had there. So I'm gonna throw that off to the side. Now we have this space here. Um, this space has been um, under heavy mulch for a very long time. So it's kind of good because all this soil has already started the, the decomposition process. It's been breaking down. It's had uh, lots of, of organic material in it. As I'm doing this, I just see nothing but earthworms and it's really, really dark, rich soil. So let's go ahead and grab a shovel and just kind of scoop this out to the side so we can plant this in. I don't have to do any soil mixing for this just because it has already been uh, underneath this heavy mulch for a, a, the last two years. I will though see, and if the dirt does look like this hard clay, I may go in and I may um, add just a tiny bit of, of that soil in just to give our hog farm a good start. So let's go ahead and grab that shovel and we'll get started here. Alright, so I went ahead and made the hole pretty pretty deep, deep enough for, for this guy here. Now I did find a few interesting things in there other than our um, other than our earthworms. I did find a grub as well. Now this is what that grub looks like. Now I'm okay with grubs uh, for the most part. Sometimes um, you know if I see a tree declining uh, or an area declining, I may do something about them, but most of the time these grubs aren't after the, after the um, plants themselves. They just want to help decompose that organic material. So a lot of times these grubs actually are pretty beneficial. Uh, for this guy, I don't know yet what I'm going to do with it. I'm not going to put it back in the hole just because this is a brand new tree. But I may set it up to the side and kind of let nature, nature do its thing. Uh, there might be a predator bug around that wants to eat it. Uh, if I had chickens, I'd give it to them, but uh, unfortunately at this time, there are no chickens or ducks here in the green yard. Maybe in the future, though, uh, that might be something that changes. Let's go ahead and take this hog plum. Definitely needs some water. Uh, I got it two days ago. It is uh, it is a beautiful tree, though. Really, really, it's in really, really good shape. So let's go ahead and see how rooted out it is. Uh, actually, it's pretty rooted out, which is great. That's what I like to see. That's awesome. Um, so I always look for the best best view because <laughs> even though it's here for for um, for food, I also want to make sure that it's. Uh, I like looking, I like looking at my trees too. So uh, let's see here. So a little bit too deep. I want the root ball, the top of the roots here, to be sticking out. Um, so I'm just going to add a little bit more of the soil back in. Just scooping it in here. Yeah, that should be perfect. Went ahead and put it in right like that. Looks perfect to me. So let's go ahead and start breaking up a little bit of this, this somewhat clay dirt back in. Just kind of scooping it all in all around here. Um, I shouldn't need any extra dirt. If I do, though, I'll just go ahead and grab uh, some.
it looks really good um i am going to take out this you can see there's a nursery stake here it's really not do anything doing anything for the tree itself the tree itself is pretty pretty straightforward plus it's broken so i'm just going to take this off real quick uh while we're here if i can i might need to grab a Oh, that's pretty good. Looks like there's two more of those guys. Let me just take that off, throw it to the side. See if we can get this guy off too. Yep. Yeah. Not bad, not bad. This top one though, I might need to go get the nurseries. Or the, the trimmers. Nope, never mind. He's good too. So um, I always like to, and I, I don't always show this, but I always like to remove my nursery stake because oftentimes it can damage the roots. It can damage um, the plant as it grows, as the roots begin to, to thrive in this new environment. So I like to remove my nursery stakes pretty quickly once I plant the trees, usually within the first, uh, I mean, usually when I, when I first plant them, but if I can't, I'll do it within the first week or so. Uh, remove that stake if it does need to be restaked I just make sure that I put my stakes on either side and then tie it up that way it gives the roots plenty of space to to grow so now that we have this tree planted um, let's go ahead and let's um, get some mulch on here get some amendments on here I'm also gonna have to bring some dirt in as well to kind of reinforce this berm that's here so that way the the tree can withhold some water while I do that supplemental watering uh, here's another one of those beautiful earthworms it's really in great shape here I'm gonna throw them back on the plant all right let's go get those amendments the mulch around as you can see now this is some really great mulch that's been sitting for a very long time so it's already decomposed almost more like compost than mulch which is really great for this hog plum i went ahead and put about four to six inches around this tree you can see the roots all right i'm sorry that uh, trunk is right in here i made sure that i can still see the root flare which is those top of the roots you don't want to have the mulch smother that either i did side against putting in um more of a berm here uh it already has a little bit of a berm and i think it's i think it's going to hold with what i need it for um and if i need to later i can always add some dirt here and and try to um try to keep that water in if i do hand water it supplemental water it but I have my granular sulfur. As we know, um, our tropical trees do like that lower pH. We're about eight to eight and a half here in the Phoenix Valley. Most tropical trees need between five and six. Hog plums are no different. So I'm gonna go ahead and spread uh, around this granular sulfur. When I first plant, I like to do a little bit thicker than the other times, just to make sure that I really have a good covering uh to get it off on the right foot so i went ahead and spread around that granular sulfur and uh now i'm going to go ahead and get it watered in i'm not going to do any azomite on this one today um i probably add some when i do my fertilizing in the spring but for today i'm just going to add that sulfur get it a deep soak all right so there we have it i went ahead and planted our brand new red hog plum tree produces that red uh, smallish fruit um, apparently has a sweet taste a little bit of a sour to it as well but definitely sweeter than the yellow variety so i'm very excited for this hog plum to start growing start producing some fruit um, it's in kind of this uh, secured area against the wall it's going to get that afternoon sun which it likes the sun it likes the heat it does not like the cold so i will be protecting this i will be covering this year it's also underneath this giant mulberry tree which helps it to stay a little bit warmer in this area we have our pond right next to us as well as a load of other trees which will help keep that temperature up in this area as well um, typically below about 50 degrees 
hog pumps start to suffer, so they do need that cold protection in the winter. But when it's 115 degrees outside, they do amazing. Uh, I added in that heavy mulch, also added some sulfur to uh, make sure that I can lower that pH so that the tree can start taking up those available nutrients that are, are being produced and added. So there we have it, hog plum in the ground in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm so excited to have a growing update, hopefully next year on this tree. As always, live green, plant lots, and of course have fun. We'll see you next time.